Welcome to Reality Creative Video. I'm Hermes and it's time for part two of Platinum. Now, prerequisites to this video is uh, making colloidal platinum start to finish part one, how to make washing soda, how to make stock solutions, the power supply uh, video, and if you want to review the weighing of the rod video, you can, though you don't actually need to weigh the rods to do this video, though it might be helpful. So if you haven't reviewed any of those things, please review them because this is not a complete how-to. This is going to be just the actual procedure for you to make your colloidal platinum. Now I've gone and created a check uh, a lab sheet, which I will post a link to in the uh, description, along with the links to the videos you need to watch if you haven't watched the videos. And it's pretty simple, and at the, at the end of the video, I'll also shoot a picture of this so you can, you can capture it if you don't have access to the links. So basically, you're going to check off all the boxes as you go down. It tells you everything that you need to do in order, and that's how we're going to, I'm going to do it right now for you. Now, uh, if you want explanations and stuff you know, on why we're doing certain things, you need to watch the other videos. So, here we go. We're going to get started. We're going to start with um, 500 milliliters of water, distilled water. All right. That is our goal over here on the video microscope. That is a 8 to, it's around an eight, 6 to 8 parts per million, even though it doesn't look like it, uh, colloidal platinum. So, we're going to fill our stirrer, our beaker with 500 milliliters of fluid. We're going to drop the stirrer in. We're going to turn that on. All right. Now, I'm going to put my top on here. And I'm going to put my temperature probe in there because we want to preheat this thing to 80 degrees C. The whole thing needs to be to sit at about, I'm going to sit 70, over 70 degrees C. I'm going to do 80. So I'm going to dial in this temperature thing here. I mean, if you don't have a heated, you know, an automatic temperature probe, you can heat it in the microwave. Use your, to get it going, get it up to 80. Use your laser, then turn your heat on to maintain it, and use your laser from time to time, uh, infrared laser, to tip check the temperature of the water like right now it's 25 degrees C which is room temperature so it's going to take a while to get up to 80 but I want to start with the materials okay we're going to use a copper anode I have this anode here I've been using actually has a little bit of platinum coated on it all right I'm going to put that in there Power supply, you're going to turn, for starting up, you're going to turn the power supply voltage up to 57 volts. This is a 0 to 60 power supply at a maximum of 5 amps. We will, work, we need, we will need 1.5 amps or 1500 milliamps to cook this solution. So we're going to start off at 57.5. I haven't turned it on yet. I'm just showing you the voltage to set your, your thing at. Now, the f you've got to put the chemicals in. And uh, make sure you got your pH meter handy, too. First, we're going to start with the gold formula. And the gold formula calls for using our stock solutions. Okay, 10 milliliters of sodium Citrate's going to go in there. Next, NaCl. We're going to put 50 milliliters of NaCl. We need the chlorine atom in the salt to help liberate the platinum. Corn syrup. Remember from our gold thing, we're going to use 8 drops of corn syrup. Corn syrup helps bind 
the colloidals together. Now I'm going to add flavoring extract. Three milliliters is the minimum. If you want a stronger tasting um, flavoring, you can use whatever. This is vanilla flavoring. If you want a stronger taste, you know, you can use whatever flavoring you want. What we're using out of the flavoring is the alcohol that's in the flavoring. Now, if you want a stronger tasting flavoring on your colloidal, you can add more. But three milliliters is the minimum you need to get this process started. And we're going to put that in. Honey. I use Manuka honey because it's a little bit more efficient, but regular honey will work as well. This is a 50-50 mix of honey. Uh, we need uh, three milliliters of honey. And we're going to pour that in there. Put that all mixed together very nicely. Now we need to raise the pH. I like to check, I like to raise the pH after everything is in. All right, that should not have put the whole top together. So this is washing soda. It will bring the pH to 10.75. I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon to start with. So, and we're going to add that. We're going to add the powder. You need to, like, you'll need to refer to the video on how to make washing soda, or you'll have to buy food grade washing soda. So now I've put that in there and let that, going to let that mix a little bit. We take our pH meter and we want a pH of at least 10.5. And we got 10.38. It's a little low. Now we're going to take another eighth of a teaspoon of washing soda and add that. Looks like we hit 10.53.5. That's actually fine. Anything near 10.5 is going to be good. All right. Now, as this stuff gets hot, because it's going to be at 80 degrees C, you're going to need to add more water. So what you're going to do is you need, a, you need to get some distilled water and you need to fill a beaker. I have this plastic beaker I use for this, this purpose. You're going to fill this beaker with water. And you're going to take a little bit of your washing soda, all right? I'm going to try a sixteenth of a teaspoon in here. And then I'm going to mix this up. You want to use as little washing soda as you can get away with. We need the pH at over 10.5. So we're going to, now we're going to test this up. And we got 10.5658, so that's... 10.6, so that's pretty good. And as the water evaporates, you're going to use this to replace the missing water to keep the solution at 500 milliliters. Right now we're up around 600 milliliters because we added all the stuff in there. So uh, we're going to let like 100 milliliters of that boil away. And then when it starts dropping below 500 milliliters, you're going to start putting this in to keep the, the pH high and to uh, keep the fluid up 500 milliliter mark. This is my platinum rod, which I'm going to put in there. I'm using two platinum rods. The process is going to take about five to eight hours. I'm hoping with the 24-gauge platinum rods, I got them twisted together at the top, that's going to go in over here. So I want to do a weight on these first before I put them in there and see what I got for, for weight. But I will be back as soon as this temperature reaches, um, gets over 70 degrees C. All right, welcome back. I'm at 76 degrees C, and we're ready to start the process. I've put my my platinum rod in here, rods in there. 
and I've hooked the power supply up. I got my fan in here, which on the website you will see a uh, link to the STL files to make this 40 millimeter fan uh, thing, which removes the heat, excess heat from, from in here, which keeps... Uh, it keeps it cuts down on the amount of evaporation that's going on, and it maintains a a nice temperature so that I don't uh, crack my tops here, which uh, don't like high temperature. So we're going to turn this on. Now I've already current locked this thing at 1500 milliamps, as you can see here. That's the two bottom knobs here. You see the red lights on for constant current. Now, if I was to unhook this, the current would shoot up. All right. It, oh, wrong way. See, it, shoot, it shoots up to about 1,800 milliamps and 57, at 57 volts. Now, that's what the current's too high because that will create platinum too much platinum dioxide. So, I like to current lock this down. See, the red light comes back on. And I'm going to set this at 1,500 milliamps. And that's what you need to do. Now, my cook, now you can see the voltage has dropped to 46.45 volts at 15 milliamps. So we're just going to let this cook now for... Uh... Welcome back. Now, we're at 4 hours and 34 minutes. And I've measured the rod, and we've lost about 2 milligrams of material off the rod in 4 hours and 34 minutes. That comes to about 4 parts per million solution. I took a picture over there of what it looks like right now and I'll show you the video up here. And uh, I know you can't tell if you haven't looked at so many all the platinum pictures that I've looked at but that is probably about 50 percent of the way there of what we're looking for. So perhaps in another four hours around the eight hour mark we will have our eight parts per million 4 milligrams of material, 8 parts per million colloidal platinum solution. I don't think we'll get much more than that out of it because typically 7.5 to 8 hours is about all I get before the oxidation on the, the rod uh, prevents me from going any further. Or the reducing agent, it's also the reducing agent is can only reduce about 8 parts per million. It can't force any more platinum into the material over eight parts per million for this particular reducing agent which is the the honey <clears throat> so i plan to look into other reducing agents that might be able to go further down the road but like i said this gets us gets us platinum in the door and to be perfectly honest well again and welcome back we're at the eight hour mark and i've stopped the process i am going to let the uh rod dry out a little bit so I could get a weight on it to give some idea of um, how much material we have off it and then I'm going to um, take a sample and put that in a microscope and see what that looks like and uh, take it from there so I'll see you in a little bit as soon as I uh, accomplish those things again welcome back all right, we cooked our solution for eight hours. I have allowed the solution to cool down. This is it right over here, which is batch 41 for me. I've taken a picture of it over there, and I'll show you it over here. We have definitely got platinum colloidal sitting in there. Um, I've weighed the rod, and the rod weighs in of losing about 2.5 to 3 milligrams of material. That equates to about 6 to 8 parts per million, which in what I'm finding out is quite potent and plenty. And for the low voltage electrolysis, right now that's the best we're going to get. There's one last thing you have to do before you can drink this solution, and that is adjust the pH. We, the pH will naturally come down as you cook the process, but it won't come all the way down to 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pH meter going to stick it in the solution here, measure the pH, and we got a pH of 8.4, which isn't bad. 8.4 is drinkable, but let's, just for the sake of argument, um, this was like 10 or something like that. You definitely would have to do something, but let's bring it down to 7. I'm going to use malic acid, and I am going to use a 
a very tiny, tiny amount of malic acid because this is very strong. You can use citric acid too if you want um, or even lemon juice. So I'm going to put a little bit of, just, just like see a sprinkle of that in there. I mix it up and put it put a pH meter in here and now it's at um, 7.4 so we need a little bit more to get it down closer to 7 although 7.4 is absolutely fine as you can see we're just putting sprinkles little tiny pinches in here that's it doesn't take much of malic acid to lower it citric acid lemon juice or uh, absorbic acid might take a little bit more but just go slowly because it's your first time and there we go seven seven oh right on the dot I you like that all right that's it your platinum is ready to go I'm Hermes this is reality create a video and I will talk to you again soon